Hey guys, Jack Bennett here from iCanBladeRums.com. Today I want to show you something a little bit different. You can see I've got these funny little sticks here, which you can get some really interesting sounds out of. What they are is just obviously a regular drum stick backwards, and at the back end of the stick I've drilled in a brass door stopper. Okay, so you can get, they're actually quite quite effective. You can get a number of different sounds from them. You can get kind of like an orchestral tambourine uh, thumb roll type effect, like a, a legato smooth sort of roll. You can get a much sort of... And you can mix and match with rim shots and of course the sound uh, of the door stopper on its own. Or if you give it a bit more attack. It's kind of a comical uh, little thing as well. Um, obviously, it doesn't make that much sound when it's in the air, but when you're in a rim tap position on the drum, then some of those vibrations, of course, uh, are no doubt going through the shell, and that kind of amplifies the sound a little bit, which is kind of cool if you want to do what I was just doing then where you're um, sort of incorporating it into grooves. So basically, what you do is you buy these online. I actually found it was quite hard to find exactly these ones um, they're just brass door stoppers. You drill um, into the stick itself. I've actually got the uh, the, the end of uh, the little screw poking out, so I've got to be careful not to stab myself. I probably went a little bit too far. But they're really simple to assemble. You just stick them on, and um, then you go for it. So you come up with different things. And that, that groove that I just showed you um, was just a little thing that I came up with that suited that song. But you can get lots of different things. Um, when you press, if you want to go for the roll, um, don't go straight straight onto the drum dead flat. Okay, you've got to come on a bit of an angle back and push, that's at least how I found um, to do it. So instead of going like this, where you risk at bending over like that, and therefore it's not gonna, it's not gonna do what you want it to, if you're back on an angle a little bit and then you push, then it's much easier. Now, of course, um, because it's a spring, you don't have to do anything other than push. You, you're, like, you're, not, you're not trying to shake your wrist to get it to happen or anything. You literally are just pushing the stick a little bit. And the spring going up and down, up and down at 100 miles an hour, that's what's producing the bouncing and therefore the sound. So it's actually quite easy once you get the angle right. It's actually quite an easy thing to do. It, it kind of looks um, at the start it takes you a few goes because you're sort of pressing too hard and you don't have the right angle and you sort of, sh you know, it's like when people try and learn a buzz roll um, and they think that they've got to try and produce all the notes themselves, you know, and they're sort of trying to shake the notes out with their wrist and whatnot. And then when you finally have that kind of penny drop moment and you realize all you've got to do is squeeze the stick into the head, it's quite easy. In concept, at least, um, you know, obviously, you've, like anything else, you've got to practice it. So there you go. You can do little things kind of like when you're playing uh, like a guiro. Um, you can get different speeds which will help with the rhythm. So instead of just doing one um, consistent thing of going, you might want to go. So that's what I'm doing there on the, on the in-between quaver. I'm going. I'm pushing a bit harder. Instead of just. Which doesn't really have any groove to it. If you go. You know, do that kind of slight crescendo into the uh, the note that works really well. And also, when you're doing, if you're doing longer notes, if you just want to do quarter notes, like going, it gives it a bit more shape if you push harder towards the end. It's like how horn players uh, phrase their notes. They'll often, even if it doesn't say to crescendo, they'll always do something to the note. They'll very rarely just go. Meh. It's like that. It'll often be a bit of an attack at the start. Bang. Yeah and be something like that at the end. So give your notes some shape. You've, you've got the ability to, and all you've got to do is push a bit faster, a bit harder. Um, so you could have just regular notes like this. If you wanted just more of a consistent roll, that would work. But if you wanted actual rhythms, maybe go... Oh, uh, sorry. You know, one and... 
two, and three, and four, and. So there you go. Funny little sticks. Now, where did I get this idea from? This is certainly not my idea. I must give full credit to a man by the name of Gene Kashinsky, who's a really, really top percussionist. And he's done a, a, a snare drum solo, and there's a video of it on YouTube, which I'll, I'll put the link below. Definitely check it out. It's called Swerve. I mean, he takes it to the nth degree. He's done the entire solo. He's got. He's only using one. I'm using two. And I think he has like a. It's either a, a brass skewer or a triangle beater. I can't remember. But um, definitely check out the video. It's quite an amazing, um, quite an amazing snare solo. And um, you know, if if you like the solo, consider purchasing it as well because um, you know it's really top stuff. But that's where I got the idea from. And he was doing all this sort of stuff and doing the rolls. Yeah, and it's really cool stuff. So check that out. It's, it's quite cheap. You know, these things are only three or four dollars. Get a pair into a, you know, drill them into a pair of sticks that you don't use that often would be my suggestion. And um, yeah, play around with it. See what grooves you can come up with. We'll call them the swerve sticks. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you next time. Bye.